Hello, I'm Lux, technically. And I'm technically Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 3, The Mod Couple. And back to our normal selves. I thought you wanted to do the whole episode like this. Okay, you pushed it far enough that it's already going to sloth territory here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you are the wonderful Imba. <laughs> <laughs> and now to this episode where it was another one of those episodes where it's like, well, it's not the most annoying Pinkie Pie ever. It got close, though. She has been worse. Maud was fine, though. Well, of course Maud was fine. The problem was Pinkie Pie wasn't listening. Maud tried to tell her that night after the comedy club. Though I must say, I probably have issues with, what was his name again? Mudbriar. Mudbriar. I almost wanted to call him Stick in the Mud because that's what his cutie mark was. Think about it. Mudbriar. Ah, uh, I think he'd be one of those people I might have issues with. Just because I am about mid-energy until I get around a lot of people, then my energy goes woo. I'm kind of like this weird combination between introvert and extrovert. I'm shy at first, then once I get to know you, and you're like, dude, you're doing a podcast. Hey, man, this is completely different than actually interacting with people. Yes, here we only interact in the comments. Yep. Hi. Hello. Oh, look at, look at that one. Oh, that's nice. So I actually found the jokes at the beginning of the episode quite entertaining. It's just like, with a different delivery, I'd probably be laughing. Because what you want to do with that type of joke is you want to be so serious at the beginning of it, and then say the end, and pause, and give people a moment to go, what? <laughs> and then move on to the next joke, and it's like, it's all about that awkward pause after those types of jokes, because you make people go, they just stop and think, and that's the whole point of the joke. <laughs> and then there's Pinkie Pie. Isn't my sister the funniest thing ever? Oh, that's the joke. <laughs> <laughs> like, we didn't realize this entire set was a setup for Pinkie Pie to tell one joke. Now we get it. I think it's because Pinkie Pie was too excited at the beginning of this episode. I know that's kind of hard to tell between excited Pinkie Pie and too excited Pinkie Pie. But if you paid attention to the conversation, she hasn't seen Maud for a little bit. And she's gotten used to Maud being, you know there because she now lives underneath Ponyville technically well technically it's Ponyville adjacent thank you and we may be using that joke again people so keep it in your pocket <laughs> or put legs on it anyone get that good moving on <laughs> uh, I'll be here all night ladies and gentlemen or day or evening whenever you happen to be listening to this because this is the internet everything's permanent if you don't trust me go to Facebook and download your history fun stuff <laughs> <laughs> I think it's not just the way he talks that would be annoying to me. It's how he always has to end things with, well, technically this. Why are you correcting me? Because <laughs> he does a lot of correcting of people. I'm like, stop. Don't do that. <laughs> Only do that when they ask. Because if you do it when they don't ask, it's going to annoy them. Because it's kind of like telling someone not to do something. It's not going to stop them from doing it unless you ask nicely. And you lead up with why. <laughs> Him just correcting you out of the blue like, thanks, but I said it that way for a reason. Not only because I'm ignorant, but because I said it that way. And I'm talking a lot. Please, Imba, jump in with your thoughts. <laughs> the corrections of the verbiage was getting a bit tiresome. Mostly because it's like, is this all there is to his character? It's kind of like they just did a gender swap mod with sticks, but instead of being all about sticks and comedy and poetry and songs, his main hook seems to be correcting people's statements. To technically something, something, something. Like, yeah, but it was a symbolic gesture, dude, of an olive branch. I know it technically wasn't an olive branch, but that's not the point. Though I have to wonder how he's okay with the fact that that stick looks like it was broken off of a tree when using a stick on a pinata is stick abuse. Yeah, that's another thing that kind of rubbed me the wrong way about him. I'm like, 
It's a bleakened stick, dude. It's no longer alive. It was part of a tree. The tree's alive. Yes, I get that. But the stick isn't. Especially if it's been one that's turned into a bat. That's been milled. What, what, you don't like baseball because they use wooden bats? The stick that Pinky went to use for the pinata was not fully milled. Yeah, but it was a rough one. It was probably one she's had for years. Probably. So it's dead by now, dude. And you don't see Maud having that kind of freak out about rocks. Her family farms rocks. Her family does rock sculptures for their hearse warming every year. They have rock soup. Which sounds kind of cool, but isn't, you know, rock soup. That sounds kind of cool. Is it literally rocks and soup? Yep. I'll pass. I like my teeth just the way they are. I also like the fact that we got to see the sisters again, other than Maud, Marble, and can't remember the other one's name. I know one's Marble, but I can't remember the shy one. Uh, thought the shy one was Marble. Hmm. Because the other one has the lemons for her cutie mark. You know, the gruff one who does all the talking. Marble's the shy one. Hmm. Remember her cutie marks are marbles? Maybe that's because I heard the rough one say marble at one point and I misassociated it. Oh well, moving back to the story and the episode and maybe talk a little bit about the morals. Like, we've gone over this before several times. Just because it's with a boyfriend, it doesn't really change much about the fact that, like, yeah, people are different. Some people, it takes a little bit to get underneath and find out the diamond in the rough. Or in this case, a geode. But as was pointed out in the episode with the book, who learns things in just one instance? And it wasn't really Pinkie Pie who was learning that lesson before. The fandom's gone on and on about how many times Buttershy's had to learn to be more assertive. Well, yeah, something that's that much of a behavior change takes time. The first time Maude was introduced, we basically had the same setup when Pinky introduced her to the rest of the main six. They couldn't find a connection, and by the end of the episode, they had one. I also like the fact we got to see Starlight some more. Well, that's going to be a common occurrence now that she's like this world's seventh ranger. <laughs> then guidance counselor for the school, and as a guidance counselor, she is theoretically highly qualified to provide advice. Also, as I said, Starlight, it reminded me of the fact, hey, new intro! We have Dragon Lord Ember, and Thorax, and the students, and we've changed it out for a school photo. It's the biggest update they've had to the intro. Especially the end! Everyone's there! We now have Luna, Celestia, Cadence, w whatever the child's name was. Flurry Heart. Thank you. And Shining Armor. And the throne room's changed a little bit to more match the way it looked in the movie. Well... I think it was kind of destroyed during the movie, so... Eh, remodeling. Yeah. They need an excuse anyways. Yeah, I was planning on redoing this wall. Good thing they knocked it down. <laughs> <laughs> Trading space is Cantalot edition. <laughs> I hear they're bringing that show back. I heard that too. Television's just mostly out of ideas. Yeah, well, at least they're bringing back good stuff and from what I understand. They're doing pretty good. They're bringing a lot of this stuff back, so that's cool. But back to ponies. <laughs> And friendship and blah. Sorry, that's like our favorite line from that. It was like the Storm King's best line. One of these days I might pick up the comic that's actually the prequel to the movie that explains the Storm King, Fizzle Pop Berry. Fizzle Pop Berry twist. <laughs> Thank you. And like everything that happens before the movie, like all the characters who are introduced in the movie get backstories, kind of like what happened for the Pokemon movie, the 2001 in Japan. Kids got a pamphlet when they went to the theater. In America, we got cards. Because... Oh, oh no, those kids aren't going to read. Here, have a Mew card. It's shiny. It was very shiny. I have one around here somewhere. Probably in the box where all my Pokemon collectibles are. Which isn't worth much. I am surprised. And I thought the party planning cave was mostly secret. Ah, yes. I was wondering about that. I also, like, thank you again for... I know it's your shtick and everything, but it's still a cave, dude. There is, like, no literal difference between those two. No, but the thing was, that was something Maud taught him. Also, the vision board. I do like how you brought that up. I was like, we're going somewhere with this. I think we're referencing a movie or a series. Because I, I remember a scene like this from a meme. I was like, hmm, highly mentally organized. Very. I can tell by the way he speaks. That brings up like another thing. Like, do two characters have to be 
alike like that to actually be in a relationship in the show? Or can't they be like different? Couldn't Maude have fallen with someone who's actually very high energy and closer to Pinkie Pie? Or maybe someone really shy, like Fluttershy? I'm just using characters in the show as an example. But it was basically, like you said, rule... 34 32 there's a rule for this where any any character that exists has a male version of themselves basically gender swap whatever the base gender of the character there exists the opposite gender base that's the other like issue i kind of mentally had with like uh, do we really need a character that's kind of just like her to be the person to be the boyfriend it's like none of her other friends are exactly like her she made friends with several of Pinkie Pie's friends because she and Starlight are pretty good friends. And isn't her and Trixie also friends? A little bit, but you're thinking more of Sunburst and how Starlight was oh. getting jealous because he basically made friends with all of her friends, which helps show how much they had in common, that they found things in common with the same ponies. Because that's the thing, you don't always fall in love with someone who's exactly like you with some small alterations. No, and you don't always fall for someone who's the exact opposite either. You have stuff in common, you have stuff not in common. You're two people, not one. Also, random topic change. Why was he wrapping that log? It was her birthday gift. A log. He likes sticks. But it's a log. May I point out that Pinkie Pie gave Applejack a rock for hearts warming. I was also trying to drive that home in such a funny way that it came out funny. Because <laughs> it, it's a log. It's highly useful. You could carve it. You could use it to help prop up a table. You could put boulder on it. Give him some height. Also, the guy has a stick named Twig, I believe. Twiggy. Couldn't he have named him Log? But he's not a log. He's a twig. Yeah. But boulder isn't a boulder. But Maud isn't that ridiculously precise in her word choice. Ah. And Briar is. Also, she's more of a comedian, so she sees the humor in it. People, like, hear comedian and Maud Pie and they go, oxymoron? No, it's just a different style of humor. It's not the ha-ha knee slapper type. So any more nitpicks you'd like to bring up? Oh, again for being predictable because as soon as they got out of the comedy show and mob was trying to say i haven't been around because because she met someone and then as soon as we saw briar in the shop i'm like oh that's who it is oh yeah she's dating so the mod couple though technically that's a play on the odd couple who were exact opposites and were not in a relationship not in a romantic relationship. I'm not quite sure how I overall feel about this episode. I'm thinking it's like one of the, eh, it's good, just not, it's great, it's bad. And it's like, eh, it's, it's good. It could be better, could be worse. Well, that's all right. And it's interesting to go from the season opener straight to something that has nothing to do with the school at all. But I'm perfectly fine with that. I expected them to, like, not focus on the school at all. Well, I was hoping that they weren't going to turn this into basically a high school story. Because I have a feeling we're going to see it again probably, like, maybe two or three more times before the finale, which will probably involve that one guy again. Yes, yeah, so we need to see the students in the school a couple times throughout the season because they're going to be important to the finale when Naysayer comes back. Hey, he might come back during graduation or something. Or graduation between levels. I'm not saying completely graduating from the school. Uh, we don't know the structure of the school. So are they going to have grades? Is it a multi-year curriculum? Yeah, because I was just thinking it would be something like important happening at the school. He'd show up again and ruin whatever that is. Well, under what authority would they be able to give out diplomas? There's no accreditation. So would anywhere else care about those? And also with the types of things that they're learning, do you really get a diploma for that? Because Twilight sure didn't get one and Starlight sure didn't get one. Hmm. I have a feeling most of the ponies there already have butt stamps, aka the cutie mark. Yeah, I didn't notice any blank flanks among the students. No, nope. and I don't think any of the other races will get anything like that, as in a magic thing or a totem like Gabby got. Also, Gabby got was kind of hard to say. 
Is there anything else you'd like to go over or should we wrap things up in a nice little bow with a stick in it? Technically, it's a log. One last time, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, outro. Henshin? Yeah, I love how you're like going to do a transformation sequence cutscene every time you say outro. Because I just think it's cool. I pose well. Oh wait, this is a radio show. Gosh darn it. Also, as you can tell, I've been coloring Mod Pie. <laughs> it's me as a rock. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 3, The Mod Couple. I challenge you to do the outro bit with that tone of voice. Thank you for listening. If you have enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, share, comment, check out other videos. If you enjoy Lux's art, you can find more of it throughout the internet, including Tumblr, Twitter, and DeviantArt. If you would like some of Lux's work for your own, he does take commissions. Please check the link for pricing and availability. If you would like to support this channel financially, we have both a Patreon and a Coffee link. Patreon starts at $1, and Coffee works in increments of 3. Thank you again for listening. Thank you to all our existing subscribers, commenters, and supporters in any way, shape, and form both financial and non-financial. If you weren't here, we couldn't be here. <laughs> oh my god, I'm not even doing mine! Oh, it was so hard! <laughs> yeah, I had to look away from you because I'm like, you're gonna make me break character.